Welcome back to Beards and Brews. Hey, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe or follow no matter where you're listening. Not only does it help us out, but you'll know exactly when we have another one brewing. Gentlemen, we're going to kick off summer with a classic. Not this summer, but we know what you did last summer. What'd you guys think? Well, if we're calling each other out on what we did last summer, then I shit my pants. Oh man, I guess it might be the time to go ahead and man up and say it. Brady, I shat your pants too. <laughs> I was wondering who shat my pants the second time. I knew I didn't do it. I didn't even have milk that day. <laughs> oh, no. Um, I might have also shat in your pants. God damn you. <laughs> See, that's why you never scare a magician. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I know what you did last summer. This movie, I don't know. I think I expected more. I can't say that I was disappointed, but this was exactly a movie. Yeah, this was my pick, and I hadn't seen this movie since, you know, theaters in the year 1997, so it's been a while. I remember this being good. It really isn't. Yeah, I sat down with the wife, and it took us two goes to get through this, and this is right up her fucking wheelhouse. This is her type of movie, and we sat down and just went, I'm not sure where this is going wrong, but it's all going wrong. It's got all the hallmarks that you need. It's got four really pretty people that are going to look good dead, right? You got a writer who has already had success. The same writer from Scream, which I'm sure is going to come up a lot during this. So what more do you need? I think it's because it was made in response to Scream, like in less than a year. They kind of farted it out. But we kind of reached this level where it's not particularly awful, but it's not particularly any good. It's yeah. almost like uh, they saw Scream, they're like, okay, Wes Craven, smart guy, he's onto something. But then they go ahead and try to tear it apart and put it back together, but Scream itself is a teardown of horror already, so when you rearrange a rearrangement, you're left with what the first thing was trying to satire to begin with. It's weird. Yeah, there's there's no feeling of satire in this. It's all meant to be taken serious, and you can't because you're waiting for, like, those goofy moments that just never come, those moments that would make it stand out, and they're not really there. The The biggest payoffs we get are Jennifer Love huge tits. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of uh, what makes this fail as sort of like a response to Scream is, like you said, Scream tore down the genre of horror, but and all of those references in there were very, like, upfront. If there were homages or anything to classic horror in this, like Scream was supposed to have, they just come off as just cliche. Very much so, very much so. I know, spoilers, we're jumping way ahead. But the big reveal of the killer, after we sit through an hour and 40, which, oof, after you sit through an hour and 40 to get the reveal, you go, are you fucking kidding me? Like, uh, The first 20 minutes are actually pretty decent. Uh, yes, I, I was I was Maybe. engaged at least. Uh, you were wondering where this is going, like even Maybe. through the the like uh, the car scene where they actually hit him, and then after that, it's just like, eh. Well, personally, I feel like that took a little too long. I mean, like in the first movie, they did the whole bait and switch with Drew Barrymore and stuff. Spoilers, true. And it was a whole ten minutes. Like after this entire beginning setup was finished, we're like almost twenty four minutes in. That this is almost an hour and a half movie. It's such a large chunk. So what that does, it makes like the middle bit feel like a huge slog because since we no longer have the subversion of our expectations with like how this movie's put together, it almost feels like they're trying to subvert our expectations by not subverting our expectations. It just plays flat out. I can see what you're saying. You get the bare bones minimum glimpse at who they are, and honestly, they're all unlikable. I didn't care for yeah. any of these characters. Okay, Those Jennifer Love Hewitt's to... character to me isn't completely unlikable. She is very pretty, and that I can think of two though. reasons you like her. Come on, uh, <laughs> pretty big, yeah. <laughs> Come on, yeah. Jennifer, you got the whole package. It's not just uh... okay, but everyone else: <laughs> Ryan Phillippe, Sarah Michelle Gellar. <laughs> Freddie Prince Jr., they're all just there, and they're all kind of assholes. Yeah, it's just, they're all very just reminiscent of 90s horror. They're just all caricatures. Yeah, like, 
Buffy is supposed to be like the the pageant girl. Ryan Phillippe is like the the meathead boyfriend, and Freddie yeah. Prince Jr. is like, I don't know, the one of them that didn't grow up rich. Yeah, he's kind of like the outcast, kinda, yeah. but. They only really had one, like, little disagreement by where they are in society. Yeah, like, he's supposed to be, like, different from them, but really he's just, like, a tall, attractive, white male, like, for you. What kills me is that he's supposed to stand out. You know, he didn't have the the rich upbringing. He didn't have the civility that these other people are supposed to have. And he's the biggest fucking pussy in this movie. Fucking yeah, Roto JT chokes his woman in front of him, <laughs> and he just stands there. It's super hilarious, too, because the movie leans really hard on the tension of the scene. Because, you know, they hit this guy, they're trying to just, like, sweep it under the rug, so on and so forth. Not Shaggy's like, we gotta take this to our grave. Chokes fucking Ghost Whisper, like, you better not say nothing. And her man just like, babe, you good? Well, I didn't want him to choke me next. <laughs> He's gonna make <laughs> me cry a river. Oh, oh no! I, I do have him down as Wish dot com Justin Timberlake. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, after they strike this guy and kill him, maybe I don't know. Um, our boy Leonard from Big Bang Theory shows up, who is like quite yeah, obviously I... hot on Jennifer Love Hewitt's character, um, and that's like his whole thing. But that's like his only thing. The movie just keeps him there for like a whole five minutes. The only reason why he's in the movie is just to be a body later. And he's like the first kill, and it's pretty far into the movie before we get the first kill. And then the next kill after that is so much farther after. Like, for, for this had... being a, a slasher horror movie, there's not a whole lot of slashing. Well, there is like a little bit, like in the literal sense. It's kind of silly. But before the cast, we mentioned that like there's a bit of like indiscriminate killing of innocents. And it mm-hmm. kind of like shakes the movie up a little bit like these people are clearly adjacent maybe friends whatever have nothing absolutely zero to do with what happened and then they're just used as i don't know cannon fodder but like not even in a clever way they're just like oh they're dead i guess we might be dead later the please no yeah Yeah, they just they just needed more characters to kill because they didn't want to kill the pretty people yet. Yeah, so um, I think we can go ahead and spoil it. Everyone who is listening to this has either already seen this or will never see this based on this review. The killer <laughs> is <laughs> the killer is the uh, oh god. It's kind of it's kind of a convoluted way to get there, but it's like the dad of the fiance who was dating the guy or something like that. I don't know. It doesn't matter. They're trying to explain who he is to us. And in your head, as most thrillers and action slashers would go, it's someone we've met. It's someone we know. Someone you care about at all for any reason. Or at least had an inkling. Just like even an idea. Anything. This guy just shows up and it's like, wow, it's Ernest. What? Yes. It's that guy over there. It's 110% that guy and i know that they probably thought it was clever at the time but it's one of the dumbest reveals i've ever seen in a movie because they do not tell you that this character even fucking exists you get no inkling that he is anyone or anything and then suddenly uh uh-oh who's the killer this guy and you go who's that and if the movie has to explain to you who the killer is, not just by revealing them and you going, aha, I knew it, or, oh, I was thinking it was this guy, you got me. But you just go, I don't know who the fuck that is. He was never even in the movie. Well, it's just like Crystal Skull. Who the fuck is Mac, and who the fuck was that guy in this movie? Slicker yeah. man. <laughs> well, see, look, that's the thing. That's how you know this movie is just piggybacking off of Scream. A hundred percent, because they got to the end, and they're like, okay, the person that makes the most sense can't be him. So they're just like, opposite end of the spectrum. Bloke. Got it. All right. Yeah. We, we got to make this good. Who is the least likely character in this movie that could be him? I what got if... it. Somebody not in this movie yet. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what if it's the guy's boyfriend's daughter's second cousin twice removed on his mother's side's best friend (laughs) makes no fucking sense almost as much sense as the fact that whenever they hit this man with their car they're like let's get rid of the body 
They take him all the way inside their car, mind you, to the docks where they then throw his semi-conscious body into the ocean and drown this man. It goes from, you know, attempted vehicular manslaughter to full-on murder, premeditated at that. And he happens to grab her whatever the fuck it is, Miss Teen America crown. She's the clam queen. Yes. (laughs) She sure is. He's covered in blood. Proto JT is. He jumps in the water, and by God, who's down there but Billy Mays with Ocean Clean. You can tell it's working because of the bubbles, okay? With new fishy seaweed scent, he comes out not a drop of blood on his sweater anymore. Well, yeah, it washed off, obviously, right? That's just the power of the sea. New Ocean Clean! You want to slap a fucking piece of duct tape on it. Well, when all is said and done, the presumably dead guy is all dead and whatnot, and the four plucky teenagers or whatever go and live the rest of their lives. Nothing ever happens. Credits roll. Guess what, guys? This is a Hallmark picture. Yeah. Ah, It's a lifetime movie, for sure. It feels like a lifetime, for sure. Good lord. Yeah, so one year later, we find out a lot of things are going on with Jennifer Love Hewitt's character. She just got a letter. She's doing bad at college stuff. Her dad is dead. And uh, her mom's a bitch. Chandler? Yeah. She just got a letter. She just got a letter. She just got a letter. Wonder wonder who it's it's from. from. Well, these blues clues, they just just don't add up. (laughs) No, they fucking don't. Because she's already pre-crying before she even reads this. Did you see that? They didn't even go and touch that shit up. She already had, like, the tear streaks running down her makeup before she's ever like, <laughs> Mama, <laughs> rough this. Well, she definitely got the worst of, like, all four. So, like, Fredo, he, like, he became a fisherman like his pa. Whatever. Kind of respectful. Fucking Buffy. She's doing something in the store. Whatever. Not Shaggy. He's just rich as fuck. He ain't got to do nothing. You know what Ghost Whisperer got? Depression. Well, it happens. But she also got a letter that says, I know what you did last summer. And that's where we all point at the screen. He said the thing. Leo DiCaprio meme. Well, she reads that out loud to herself, I guess, because she can't believe it. And she turns pale. And speaking of pale, this is from Fremont Brewing. This is summer. It's their summer pale ale. Very dry. Um... Pretty well balanced, honestly. There's not a whole lot to say about it because this is just straight up classic middle of the road pale ale. Well, Chanman, that sounds like a really solid drink and totally didn't happen a week ago. Now that Ghost Whisper has the letter, she's going to collect all the other employees of Mystery Inc. and get this mystery solved. Yeah, I think first stop is uh, going to get Buffy from the department store. <laughs> Did we mention Sonya Blade is in this? Oh, Veronica Vaughn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember the actress's name, but she pops up in a lot of things. Definitely not uh, unincluding Mortal Kombat. Yeah, she's in this movie. She's kind of hanging out. I do believe she's the uh, the lady that runs the shop that mm-hmm. Buffy works for. Yeah, she's Buffy's sister. Ah, that would explain like the catty cuntiness that they constantly do to one another for no good reason. Yeah. Also, her just randomly being in her house uh, a little bit later. I I don't know. I'm just assuming, sister. I don't think they ever actually say it. Well, I mean, it was pretty much cleared up here because I don't remember any kind of, like, biological connection in that movie. They were just like, I hate you kind of, but meh. Yeah, I hate you too. Meh. I was like, all right, cool. And then next up is going to be the Wish.com Justin Timberlake, um, who we find out Buffy and he broke up because he is a dick. He is the dick like they show up and they have genuine concerns hey someone knows about that murder death kill we did starring sylvester stallone and he's just like why did you even come here fuck you guys i'm a dick (laughs) yeah he's just like a trust fund baby just up on his balcony just living shirtless in the summer kind of (laughs) a life isn't it i mean they had to give him some kind of dramatic angle like oh it didn't work out maybe they'll get back together in this movie tune in next time kids and but in reality it's just like well he's just kind of cannon fodder right just with the little ramen hair little squigglies no nope. nobody wants that guy that's why like earlier he almost got ran the fuck over it. i had flashbacks to like prometheus or some shit so like yeah they try to get the mystery team together and then good old Murder Man catches up to Justin Timberlake or what have you. And so there's a thing where, like, his car, the car that quote-unquote killed Man, is like his baby, it's a Beamer, whatever. 
it gets kind of stolen and then tries to run him over but in no way shape or form did he have the idea of just like going to the left or better yet go into the right go anywhere well he did go somewhere he went through the entire faux storefront yeah, I don't even know what kind of building that was. It just looked like a load of lumber that had been, like, tacked together for someone yeah. to to fall through. I'm going to call it one of the boxes from Crash Bandicoot. Ooh, I like Ooh. that. Ooga booga and everything. Yeah. Actually, that might, have been, that might have been what saved his life because, like, the dude was on the ropes. He's like, ah, oh, I'm right here. Kill me. And the guy's like, no, I guess. Peace. <laughs> Well, that made yeah. no sense in my mind no. because I understand that he's trying to fuck with him or whatever. But he's got him lit, put him through a fucking storefront on the hood of a car. This dude is demolished. He he goes to hover over him and sideshow him the hook, and then that's yeah. it. That's actually one of the biggest drawbacks for this movie for me. This is what like a almost a two hour long movie, and we don't get a main character kill until about twenty five minutes left. Yeah, there's almost nothing of any danger or risk or, like, reality actually happening in this movie, at least to the characters that we care about, and I only care about the one with the boobs. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but while all this is happening, the movie's like, you know what, we gotta have a B-plot because we're only running 90, maybe 100 minutes, mm-hmm. so we gotta have the ladies do something. So they're doing some investigation, like, this is the part of the movie where the main characters crack down, and they're trying to, like, figure everything out, but they just... I don't know. It's like, it doesn't feel like it's in-depth enough. They just kind of go to the library, look at some newspapers, like, yeah, it's that guy. It yeah, has but... to be that guy, because Creole and Haish living out in the fucking bayou with Bobby oh, like... Boucher, and they're like, I, I I, just wanted to visit and ask if you had a cup of sugar, and she's like, I'm going to tell you about my whole family history and how my brother done went and killed himself. Yep, my car's yeah, broke yeah, down. Yeah. Well, I can fix it for you. No, that's all right. I'll just let me use your phone. <laughs> it's just one of those things where, like, the movie thinks it's real fucking clever. I was like, ah, this is n- so not a red herring. Wink! And you're just like, ah, oh, man, you're literally wasting my time, aren't you, Anne Hage? And she's just like, hey, yuck. It's all I'm in the script Dude, for. 100%. Because they're trying to give you those clues, like the red herring, as you said. Trying to give you those clues that point to get your gears turning, but they don't turn at all because the information you get doesn't make sense. Because, again, the big reveal at the end doesn't make sense. To me, it's not so much that it doesn't make sense. It's just that I know that it's not going to be that simple. We've still got, like, 50 minutes left in this at this point. Like, that's too open and shut. Uh, They're going to do some convoluted shit and they do (laughs) well the movie spends its time doing just like fuck all sometimes so you don't really have the room to plant these other red herrings or even like get the audience to suspect anybody the fuck else because what happens next oh Buffy gets her hair did kinda Uh, oh the red herring I was gonna talk about is the fishmonger Leonard who finally gets bazinged I don't know if we covered that a little bit earlier (laughs) jeez he does. Yeah. He's... Honestly, that was kind of cool. Uh, I guess it's in the back of what Buffy's car or uh, yeah. Jennifer Love Hewitt's car, one of the cars, and it's a body back there. She just starts hearing like little tick, 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 tick just little sounds, and she opens up the trunk. And it's old boy and a bunch of crabs. Now, whenever I saw that, what I, I don't want to say it made me angry. What got me so confused and had me laughing is she runs off to get help, as one should. You should run away and get help. She no. passes up four to fifty houses to go and get her specific <laughs> A whole friends, neighborhood, and then doubles back. And I want to know. All right, I get it. He took all the crabs out. He took the body to be expected. But he also did like a fucking fine detail cleaning job of that trunk. I bet he had a shop vac or something on him. <laughs> It didn't even seem that like that long a time to me, you know? Like, I thought she was gone for like a moment and came back and there was just absolutely nothing. A spotless car. He just needed them for the shock effect. Now he's going to take them home, have himself a crab boil, get some Zatarans, you know? Bye. Ooh. <laughs> Think about this, though. We got Daphne and Fred. That's two out of five. And two out of five of the gang ain't that bad. 
listen, you can probably pass Jennifer Love Hewitt off as a Velma, give her a little bob cut, and then, oh, Ryan Phillippe, he could be Scooby. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a second. Bring bring Leonard back. That's our Shaggy right there. We got the whole group. But see, that's a plot twist I would have really enjoyed. It's like, oh, shit, it was Lenny all along. I feel like that's, like, so obvious that it would be sneaky if it happened, you know? It's like, oh, it's the guy that we suspected first. Kill him off the screen. That way he can get back to filming Roseanne. Oh, Oh, you're right. It's all full circle. We get a couple of kills now, right? Since he is all, I have revealed myself and my grand plan, which is to torture slash put crab broil inside your trunk, because that's what killers (laughs) do. We get, what is her name? Sarah Michelle Gellar's sister or whatever that works at the makeup counter. Kathy Ireland. That's her name. Yeah. That is not Kathy Ireland. (laughs) Is it not? No. Her name is Bridget Wilson Sampras. She is Pete Sampras's wife. Well, who the hell's Pete Sampras? <laughs> well, apparently right. you are not a golfer. Damn. No, he's he's a tennis player. I just wanted the big Lebowski reference in there. No. <laughs> he was a tennis player. He's like one of the one of the the greatest of all time. What? Lebowski. But, yeah, Pete Sampras. Oh, I thought the Lebowski. I was up with Eric. Yeah, uh, the Big Lebowski, tennis player, one of the goats, uh, also married to Bridget Wilson Sampras. So, so now that nice we've got dude. that out of the way. <laughs> well, she meets her end. It's this moment of, oh, no, she doesn't know how to run. That seems to afflict most people inside of slasher movies. And yeah, that's a weird one. He, oh, he whiffs yeah. his hook at her, and we get what appears to be uh, some sort of chewed up spit out cherry pie feeling it looks awful i mean uh, if you want to call it gore i'm using the quality fingers in this movie it's just pretty basic which is kind of odd i feel like this movie is in the realm of just kind of like should have kind of gone a little over the top you know because there's so much nothing for a long time i think it would have punctuated a little harder if it had a little bit more pizzazz yeah just to let you know how much on the same page we are at this point in my notes, I have, man, this movie crawls. It, it Man, the middle section, which is like a fucking 50 minutes, an hour of the movie. It At some points, I felt like this was like all filler, not killer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the next thing I've got coming up is we go back to Anne Hesh's house and we get Lead Belly's version of Where Did You Sleep Last Night? It's a banger. Yeah, there's a lot of covers in this movie because... The real ones are pricey. Back at Anne Hesh's house, she's got a knife. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, but they, they leave again or something. I don't remember that part. Uh, the next thing I have is that the Gortons fishermen are fucking everywhere. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's just another thing in this movie that's handled just kind of just in the most whatever way. So they're ha- having some kind of 4th of July celebration a la Jaws, maybe? I don't know. That's probably too good for this movie. They see some people that look exactly like the description of said killer. And they're like, there he is. Let's go get him. And they just go get him. No, not the real yeah. guy. It's just the, him. The whole thing is uh, Sarah Michelle Geller was like last year's clam queen or whatever it's called. And she had to <laughs> she had to ride the float uh, for this year, too, you know, to pass on the torch to the upcoming clam queen. Well, had to have little Justin Timberlake as lookout to see if he could spot, you know, the bad guy he found the bad guy but it turns out there's a whole bunch of bad guys dressed just like him all right this was one of those things to where weird shit happens in this movie and it falls flat for me but he goes there he is and this guy is wearing the same shit as 30 percent of everyone on the screen and he chases him down and tackles him and it's this poor old man who is trembling while he is like thrusting upon him it's a weird fucking visual this is a parade in the middle of town not on the coast by the way and it is the fourth of july in what's supposed to be north carolina it's gonna be fucking hot the movie kind of transitions into this miss clam or whatever i forgot it was (laughs) Clam queen? I'm calling her the Clam Queen. Yes. Clam Queen. Yeah, well, while uh, Buffy's getting her clam crown, a uh, calamity happens in the back of the fucking ah. joint. Justin Timberlake, her boyfriend, just like, for some reason decided to go up into the balcony and be like, don't worry, I'm going to go up here and look for murderers. And then she's like, ah, shucks. And then he chokes out, I found the murderer. 
So what Buffy does, of course, she yells out in front of everybody. There's a microphone in her face. Probably 300 people hear her say, Look, my boyfriend is getting killed. Please help. Or something. And everybody's like, wow, she's hot. Let's clap some more. Also, he Dude. was a dick, so we don't care. They gave him like a quick once over the shoulder. Nah, yeah, fuck him. Eh. Yeah, they saw it happen and they were like, nah, he can go. That's <laughs> not my quarterback. Oh, yeah, he's the guy that sells all the shitty boats. My dad owns a dealership and he's just a hook in his fucking face. <laughs> you know who his dad is? <laughs> I know we mentioned old Sonya Blade a little bit earlier. Did we mention that she got it ear to ear? Well, That's a Mortal yeah, Kombat it... reference. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, she kind of did. I mean, in reality, she just kind of got, like, shoved up against the door and she farted out some ketchup. Yes. Buck 50 special effects department. They had it covered. <laughs> you can even see the guy, like, flicking it off his fingers. Like, get that shit off me. <laughs> Oh, man, it's Hunt. I hate Hunt. I'm a Hines <laughs> man. I was going to say, this is even Hines. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this calamity happens. We got Buffy running away, jumping out into some garbage, uh, just like this movie. <laughs> oh, yeah, she ends up running out to old uh, Freddie Prince Jr. You know, he's a fisherman on a fishing boat. What's the name of that boat? It's the Billy Blue. Because of, because of the one thing that uh, Cajun Ann Hash said earlier, it is so we think it's him now. Yeah, there's just uh, not enough evidence, to be honest. I mean, that's just... It's whatever. Like, that boat looks wrecked as fuck. It could have been, like, sold and used for years. Like, it's whatever. The can, smallest scrap but, since her reeling. Yeah, but, man, can we talk about Buffy running through this parade? Just wind up just getting myrtleized around some Goodyear tires? Possibly Pirelli. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan of this bit just because of how ridiculous it was. Uh, it reminded me of a map from Hitman Contracts, I think <laughs> yes. is the one it was. When you're in New Orleans and you got to kill the guys in the alley, no one gives a shit. Yeah, this is definitely a blood money moment because, like, she gets caught in these tires very close to where the crowd is having their parade and stuff, but the way it's positioned looks so much like a Hitman opportunity. Like, you garage your victim and you just chuck him in the pile of tires, never to be seen from again. Someone's murdering the Clam Queen. It's last year's <laughs> Clam Queen. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Between her and Justin Timberlake, I just love the town's indifference. It's like, fuck them kids, man. Fuck them rich-ass kids. We're with Freddie Prince Jr. He's smelly on a boat. You know who else is on the boat? Uh, the killer. Yes. So she gets rescued from her non-killer by the killer, and she has this realization moment when she runs down into the cabin of his ship. And, of course, he has all the photos taking of them throughout the film from the same angles that the viewer got to see them. Man, that's convenient. Her reaction to it seemed very spart smelly. You know, she's just like, oh, man, I do believe I have fucked up. Yeah. Like, when she thinks one person's the killer... She freaks out when she thinks second person's the killer. She freaks out. You, you can't fool me thrice. I'm going to stay calm this time. Oh, you're really the killer. I should freak out. Yeah, this is it. This is the moment. The killer reveal. Here he is. It is. God. I don't know. Who is this guy? I don't know. Just bloke. It's like contact. You wait the whole goddamn movie and it's their fucking father. At least with contact, you can kind of use your imagination to see where they're coming from. Like, the whole belief versus science thing. Fine. I get that. But with this movie, I have we've never seen that man before. No. Not, like, ever. It's Indy's best friend from Crystal Skull. God, fuck, Mac. Uh, Freddie Prince Jr. comes in. He's going to do some swashbuckling. Oh, this is how... I, I don't care about this. I don't care about... We're, yeah. we're done here. The big thing was, who's the killer found out who the killer was there's probably going to be a sequel tell me in the credits who survives yeah. <laughs> tell me I in mean... the credits who survived yes yeah we get like a little idea when you leave a guy for dead make sure he's really dead da, da, da. I, but I don't know uh... it's yeah. not that special it's such a fucking anticlimactic moment and then even when they kill the villain they don't kill the villain they fucking oh, hoist no. him up and turn him into Captain Hook slash Candyman and all the other yeah. fucking shit you can think about with one-handed hook people. Well, I'm sure he'll turn up someday and... Oh, come on. 
that was also a moment where the movie was kind of reminding itself it was a horror movie. You know, hook him up on the little pulley thing. Oh, his hand popped off. It comes off so fucking clean. He just goes up, it falls off, and then he hit two-handedly dives into the water. Pay attention to that. It's pretty solid. Yep. And I guess all that just for the cops just kind of walk on the boat, look at the hand, and be like, yeah, I guess he's dead. You good? He's probably dead. If that's enough evidence for death, then Chubbs himself was dead. Oh, no. It's all, oh, in, man. The, all in the hips. Ten seconds later, fucking old girl's got her tits out taking a shower on the phone with her man in a steamy bathroom, and there's a note... I still know, and who jumps out of the shower? Ghostface. Who fucking knows? Yeah, it's just a, a CGI image jumping through a, a glass door, a mirror, yeah. something. I don't know. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter, because that's not canon. It's, <laughs> it's just like that little bit of edge that just turned into cringe 20 years later. 100%, yeah. I'm right there with you. For me, this movie doesn't lean into one side of the genre or the other, like you mentioned Saw and, you know, the movies like that. So with Scream, you have an actual who done it. With Saw, you know who did it. You just got to see who's willing to do the worst shit to survive. At least it had a gimmick. This movie had no gimmick. And it didn't even lean into the tropes that had provided by the genre to really make itself unique. It was just flat all around for me. It's kind of odd for such a copycat movie to be so goddamn clumsy, but... There's really nothing here. There's really no nutrition to enjoy. You don't think there's any nutrition in this milk toast? Because that's <laughs> what this is. This is a milk toast ass horror movie. No. It's just the narrative is mediocre. The acting is mediocre. The reveal, twist, whatever is mediocre. Every single kill is mediocre. They played it way too safe. And like this movie is not going to be remembered as anything other than like the movie that that guy wrote after he wrote Scream. Well, there you have it. That was I Know What You Did Last Summer from a year, probably. If you have any strong feelings about the show or the movie, leave in the comment section below. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons. Be sure to bash the little bell icon down there so you don't miss what we've got brewing up next. Get out there and follow us on social media. We're all over the place. We got Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and you can find us anywhere podcasts are available we got the spotify shit we're on the apple podcast i think we even got like youtube give us a shot we're kind of funny sometimes and i promise you even on our worst days we're better than this movie was hey yo we on threads yet